Today we are going back to the basics, our video series that provides you with critical information regarding the techniques and knowledge that the Madison Group uses to solve the many problems that occur in the plastics industry today. In this video, we will be discussing the basics of the test method Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy, or FTIR for short. This video is intended to provide the pertinent knowledge required to understand the results provided from one of the most pivotal test methods in the polymer analysis. At the conclusion of this presentation, you should be equipped with the basic concepts of FTIR, including what results to expect and how to understand what those results are telling you. We are the Madison Group and we are your polymer experts. In this video, we will be covering what an FTIR is. We will outline the very basics of how the machine functions. We will address what results to expect in order to provide you with an understanding of typical results and how they may be presented by a material analyst. We will tackle the very basics of what an FTIR test can do for you and what problems can be investigated with this equipment. And finally, we will provide some of the limitations of this test method so you can understand when this test can be utilized for effective problem solving. So what is FTIR? FTIR is an analytical technique that is used by a material analyst to investigate a substance's chemical composition. This technique is most useful for organic liquids and solids. The test provides the material analyst with a graphical representation of the material that is used for identification. That graphical representation is much like a fingerprint, which is unique to the specific chemical makeup of that material. Similar to how a fingerprint is utilized to identify the suspect in your favorite episode of CSI, a material analyst can use these results to investigate the cause of many problems associated with polymeric parts. So how does the equipment produce these results? In a very simple sense, the sample is exposed to an infrared light that repeats the exposure over various frequency ranges. Upon exposure to the broad spectrum energy, some of the wavelengths of light are absorbed into the material, which causes the molecules to move. The conversion of infrared light into molecular motion absorbs some of the applied energy while some goes through or past the sample. The energy that makes it through is recorded by the detector, which after some mathematical processing provides the final results. This is a typical absorption spectrum that the material analyst will receive from the equipment. The results are presented with intensity on the y-axis and wave number on the x-axis. In general, this graphical representation shows the amount of energy that was absorbed by the sample at different wavelengths of energy. The location, shape, and height of the peaks are directly related to the types of chemical bonds in the material. All of these peaks and valleys are utilized for interpretation. For polycarbonate, we can see the different regions of the sample correspond to various functional groups represented in the backbone of the polymer. It should be noted that based upon the way the samples and machine are prepared, the y-axis can show either absorbance or transmission. Either way, the results will be presented in a similar manner. In order to provide an identification of the material, the obtained raw spectrum is compared to a database of known reference spectra. This comparison provides the analyst with the best match as presented by the computer algorithm. Reference spectra are selected from the database to identify the unknown material. As we can see in this example, the surface residue matches well with all of the references shown. However, in many cases, our spectrum will be more complex and the library will not provide a perfect match. In these situations, an experienced analyst will utilize their knowledge of the material and polymer chemistry to provide several spectra that, when added together, identify the material. After library searching and interpretation, the identification is typically presented with the original spectrum above the various identified components of the material. So how do we review our results to ensure that we have a thorough and accurate identification? For that, let's walk through an example to learn how to interpret the results for an unknown material spectrum. In general, we want to compare the shape and location of the peaks in the spectra vertically. 
For this sample, the absorption spectrum was composed of multiple different components, which added together create the fingerprint for identification. As we can see, this region contains absorptions that are from the base polymer and the plasticizer. Between 2200 and 2300 wave numbers, we have a peak that is associated with the base polymer. Next, we have overlapping signals from the polymer and plasticizer. And finally, we see broad absorption bands that indicate two different types of inorganic fillers. From this comparison, we can recognize that most of the peaks in the original spectrum were represented in the identification and can be confident in the results. Now that we know what results to expect from this technique, what are the primary uses for the FTIR test method? Material identification is one of the primary uses of FTIR analysis. The results can be used as a quality control to confirm the correct incoming materials or to deformulate a material and determine its chemical makeup or bulk additives. This can be important to kickstart a material selection or confirm the correct resin was utilized during a failure investigation. Another common use of FTIR is to identify the chemical makeup of contamination and help determine its source. This analysis can provide information that will greatly reduce downtime and help to increase the quality of components in a timely fashion. Additionally, field contaminants can be identified to help accelerate failure analysis efforts. FTIR testing can be utilized to investigate modification of a polymeric material due to environmental conditions. This analysis can help to identify root cause of the modifications to a polymer during use. The analysis of these spectra require knowledge of the degradation byproducts and the corresponding peak locations on the absorption spectrum. Finally, FTIR can be utilized to monitor reaction rates and progress of thermosetting resins, adhesive, and potting agents. This can be utilized during process setup or as a failure analysis tool. While FTIR is a very powerful technique, there are limitations that may affect where this test method will be an effective problem solving tool. One limitation is that materials with similar structure are difficult to differentiate. Take for example, two different polyamide materials, six and six six. Only slight differences in the backbone are apparent in the hydrocarbon groups. Therefore, these spectra will be nearly indistinguishable and will need additional tests to properly identify. Additionally, specific grades of material within a family, for example, Lexan-121 versus Lexan-141, will not be distinguishable with this method. Another limitation is the heavy reliance on the libraries for interpretation. While in-depth knowledge of organic chemistry can allow for some interpretation of peaks, if a specific compound is not in the library used for comparison, it can be difficult to precisely identify the substance. As shown in our interpretation example, absorption bands are additive, which can confound the interpretation of the spectra. This means that weak overlapping bands may not be observable in the overall spectrum. Detection limits for most additives are generally between 1 and 5% and therefore may require additional test methods to identify. Finally, quantification of components is difficult with this method and will require significant method development in order to get accurate results. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to let us know and comment below with any questions or topics that you would like to see covered on the channel. Also, remember to subscribe so you do not miss any of our new content. If you have a specific problem you would like one of our experts to discuss with you, please reach out at the contact information in the description below. See you in the next video.